What's up guys, it's your boy DJ Rick Webb. We're back at it again, and I'm here today to talk about what the title says, monograms, how to do digital monograms. So yes, today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I do digital monograms. Uh, we currently have two projectors. We have the one that's in this case behind me and we also have an older one as well. But I'm gonna show you guys the newer projector. The older projector is like the secondary one that goes out. This is the main one that goes out to all the events now. The, the older projector we're kind of like keeping on the back burner for the secondary monograms. So the way this video is gonna work, I'm down in the garage right now and I'm gonna show you guys everything that's in the monogram case as well as what all things we use for it and then I'm gonna send you guys out to an actual venue where I did one of these to show you guys how you like set it up in the real world and uh, how you use the auto formatting that this projector has another reason why we're using the new one versus the old one this one has like auto keystoning and then lastly I'm gonna finish up the video by talking about where I get my monograms made because I don't actually design them myself I don't have the time to do it so I outsource that to a secondary company that I pay to make my monograms for me. All right, so inside of here we got our IEC. This is a 25 foot IEC, so that way we got plenty of distance to plug in our projector and get to a wall outlet so we don't have to use extension cords in most scenarios. Secondly, we have our media player, and this is what we use for digital video monograms. So animated monograms where we're actually doing movements on the wall, you guys saw these at the wedding shows in 2019. We're gonna be doing them again here in 2020. But I already have this kind of pre-wired with some Velcro too. I'll show you guys how that works. And then these are kind of already set to where they will plug into the back of the projector. Obviously we got the projector remote. We have our remote for our media player as well. Inside of this bag right here lies our Colorado Sound and Light mount. So this is the mount that goes onto our gravity stand, which I'll show you guys in a second. And it screws on right here. This mount also comes with this bracket you see right here that's attached to our projector. Lastly, before I pull the projector out and show you guys what projector I'm using, uh, we gotta go right here. And this is a backup lamp bulb for the projector. I highly recommend if you're getting into projectors, if you're getting into the digital monograms, to build in a spare backup lamp bulb for your projector inside of all of your cases. This extra lamp bulb I think was somewhere around a hundred and something dollars. 100% worth it to have a separate backup lamp bulb inside of your case because you never know when that lamp bulb is eventually going to take its life, it's going to be done for, and you're going to be crapped out of luck at the event where you need to do a $500 digital monogram that this bride paid a lot for and got it customized and everything, and your projector's dead. And you have to hurry up and run and figure out all this other stuff. If you have a backup bulb, you avoid all that. All you do is pull out some screws real quick, pop in the new bulb, and you're good to go. All right, first off, gravity stands. These right here. I use these square plate gravity stands. And one thing I love about these is one, being that it's a plate, it has a lot more weight and it's a lot less likely to fall over compared to there's a rounded one. I know Bar's got the rounded one. I prefer the big flat square plates. They're, they're heavier and you have, if you see here, multiple threaded spots so that if you need to put it up really close to a corner, you can do so. You can put it in the middle, you can put it off the side. You got more options to work with with this plate. Then we got the gravity pole itself right here. This is the pole that um, just screws into the base plate below me. One thing I just noticed that you probably saw it on my case and on the top lid of the case and here on the pole. Everything that I own is labeled with FSL because it's our stuff. There's a little pro bonus tip. Label all your stuff. If you want to go crazy, go barcoding it. but. At minimum, label your stuff so you know what's yours at the events. Okay, now this next part, I'm going to show you guys all of this, how this goes together and how you set it up and everything at the event um, to show you guys a real world example of how this works. Um, but let me just show you what projector we're using and all that fun stuff. So the projector that I'm using right here is the Epson 2250U. Now anyone that's already gone and Googled this projector knows that this is not a cheap projector. This is a pretty expensive projector. It's over a thousand dollars for this projector. And there's a reason why I didn't cheap out on the projector. And the main reason is you, you pretty much can't. You have to have a pretty high power projector to be able to do these monograms in semi daylight in most scenarios and for it to be visible. Another point, this is a LCD projector versus a DLP projector. 
basically for people that don't know the difference between the two is a DLP has a lot darker uh, blacks so the black will literally blend right into the wall the LCD you can kind of see like the outline of the actual monogram itself but there's ways to get around that such as using up lights on either side of your monogram it really hides and masks the effects of it and honestly most people don't see it unless you have really high profile clientele that are being very nitpicky uh, no one's ever said a word about it now a lot of you probably don't want to jump in and buy this projector so let me tell you some geeky specs of what you need to be looking for in a projector to be able to do high quality animated monograms and digital monograms again i'm going to show you guys a demo here out at the venue later on so you can skip forward if you want to but first off lumens of output how bright is this damn projector you want to shoot for at least 4,000 lumens of brightness anything less don't even look at it at least 4,000. this projector is 5,000. our old projector was 4200 so uh, you really want something that's over 4,000 lumens of output. Next thing, contrast ratio. This is very important to get that very distinct look of basically the whites really popping and your monogram popping on the wall. You really want a high contrast ratio and what you're looking for is 8,000 to 1. The 2250U I have behind me has a 15,000 to 1 contrast ratio which was a, a very big bonus in buying this projector and I believe our old one was somewhere around 10,000. Next thing you want to look at is the ability to do keystoning or quick cornering uh, depending on your projector manufacturer they call it different things but basically it's what allows you to manipulate the monogram and I'll show you guys that in the demo so that you can project this monogram on a 45 degree angle against the wall so I'm shooting like this with a wall that's this facing this way I'm shooting on an angle at it but when you're looking at the monogram it looks perfectly straight and that's because you're keystoning it you're manipulating that image so that it looks perfect when you're looking straight on at it this is one big advantage of doing projector based digital monograms versus a traditional gobo monogram with a traditional gobo monogram you i don't as far as i know you cannot manipulate and keystone and corner uh, a monogram to basically be able to project on an angle so with a projector you have a lot more ability to basically be on the side of the room and project on a wall and make it look good i mentioned it earlier and i also will show you guys in the demo but our old projector is manual keystoning so you have to go in there with the remote and you have to manually manipulate all of it with the new 2250u it uses this cool uh camera optical sensor right here and it throws out like four points you'll you'll see it in the demo when you shoot the projector like you set it up you angle it at the wall on an angle it'll automatically look at that and it will adjust it using the software and stuff that it has built into the projector and make it look good so you don't have to manually keystone it which i personally was like the biggest surprise i didn't know this thing had it i just knew this was a good projector and uh it makes things a thousand times easier resolution you're looking for at least 720p resolution preferably 1920 by 1080 which is 1080p resolution that's what this projector right here has and very last spec zoom you're looking for a projector that has zoom uh, my zoom is right up here it's a, just a little focus knob i'll show you guys in the demo i, sh I show a lot of this in the demo i'm just kind of prepping you guys walking you through all the specs and details because I didn't really dive into too much detail in the demo but you're looking for around a 1.3 you want some zoom this is kind of like a lesser important fact but having zoom is a big importance uh, this has 1.3 zoom 1.3 is about what you should shoot for some lesser things to consider that I really don't care about but some people might care about out there uh, weight this is a, a 10 pound projector um, you can buy lighter, you can buy heavier. Uh, tens that LCD projectors like this weigh a lot more than DLP projectors. Uh, that's just a no something I noticed. And then another thing that you're going to want to consider um, that I think is a very big importance is the ability to read images off a thumb drive. And I kind of show this in the demo where we're doing a uh, static monogram which is basically a jpeg or a png uh image file it's an image that's all that's all the monogram is it's just an image and uh, what we do is we load them onto a usb stick like this little this little tiny one right here and then because this projector which is another reason why i stick to epson uh epson's like one of the only brands that i find that does this you can correct me down in the comment section below if you guys are doing this with a different projector but i like epson my old one's an epson this one's an epson but i can load that jpeg image file onto this flash drive 
I just plug it into the back and then using the projector menu, I go to that image, I click on it, it's loaded up, I'm done. I don't have anything else to worry about. Counterintuitively, there's no real way around this one, but if you're doing a video monogram, which is an animated monogram where things are moving, you guys have seen me do them before, uh, you need to pick up one of these guys right here, a media player, which I talked about earlier. With this media player, I take the same USB drive, but I load it up with video file, and uh, I plug it into the front of the media player here. And then uh, I've already Velcroed this right here. So we put Velcro right here on top, slap it on there. And then uh, we have our HDMI, which plugs in right there. And then the media player gets its power via that same USB that we plugged in earlier. So we just go over here and we plug in the USB. And now we have the media player ready to go to do animated monograms as well. All right, guys, so that's 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 a walkthrough of all the nerdy, geeky stuff about this. Um, let's go to the site where I demo how you put this all together. All right, guys, you guys have been asking me tons on how to set up a monogram projector. I did film some stuff, as you guys already saw, in the garage talking about how this works and how we do animated monograms and what I use and stuff like that. So. This is the case, it's an SKB uh, waterproof case for our projector. Uh, Drake comes in, we can see everything that's in here. We have our 25 foot uh, power cable for the projector so that way we can get it up nice and high and we don't have to use any extension cords. We have our media player if we're running an animated monogram, we're not doing that today. But we have our flash drive right here. If we were running animated, we would plug into here. And then this is already set up so that we can plug in our HDMI and our USB power for the media player to run an animated monogram. But today we're just gonna be running a static one. So all we need is the flash drive for this Epson projector. We do have a spare lens over here, which is nice. And we have our handy dandy remote for the projector as well as our Colorado sound and light mounts. All this stuff is gonna be linked in the description down below, guys. So we already hooked up the projector mount to the actual thing, it's all screwed on here. Now all we have to do is take our mount here, as you guys can see, it's a little beat up because we used a lot. And we just screw it in here. I like to do this before I take it out of the case, so that way all I do is just plop it onto the gravity stand itself. So now we're gonna plop it onto the gravity stand, which we've already set up. So we just pull this out, we're gonna take it over here. For reference, this is an Epson Powerlite 2250U. It's a pretty pricey projector, but man, is it worth it. So now we got that screwed on, all we're gonna do is just plop it onto our mount. We gotta unscrew the tension a little bit on it, and then just, plop it on there, it takes a little bit of force. And now, to adjust our projector, you just unscrew the ball, there, go the wrong way. Undo this, and our ball is free to move. So uh, we're gonna straight, this is kind of like a straight shot here at Friends Farm, so we're gonna do it right about there, and then we'll adjust it further from there. Um, so on the back, if I spin this around, um, Epson projectors, at least this one, and the older version that I have, it's very handy. Um, if you're using JPEG files like I am, all of my monograms are from projectorgram.com. Check them out, link in the description down below. That's where I get all my monograms. Um, but you just plop it in there in the USB and you got a nice flush one, it's very simple. We're gonna plug in power and we're gonna be good to go. So, projector's on. There are two knobs here. One is for zoom and one is for focus. So now if you look at the, at the wall, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom Probably gonna zoom somewhere in the middle and I'm gonna focus it in to right about there so we've got some clarity to our monogram. So this projector has auto adjust so as I move over here it's going to change the aspect ratio. As you guys see right there, we're, at, we're not really projecting on an angle, but it is auto correcting and auto adjusting so that we are straight and I'm gonna straighten it up as well. All right, as you guys can see in that demo, that's how we set them up, that's how we position them. One thing I wanted to point out is that you wanna make sure that you get that projector up nice and high over top of everyone's heads and that you're shooting downwards so that no heads come in contact with the actual projection and cause shadows on the projection. So you wanna go up really high with your projector and shoot pretty much straight out, maybe a little bit up, up on an angle, so that way the projector doesn't hit anybody and you don't cause any shadows. Lastly, where do I get all of my monograms made? Where do I get all of my animated and static monograms made? Projectorgram.com.
link right there, projectorgram.com. Um, you guys can go check it out. But one thing that I love about their site is they have a secondary website with no pricing. I've mentioned this before. That website is mydigitalgobo.com. And via that link, you can send it to all of your couples out there. They can look through all of the templates that Projectorgram has, all of the animated, all the static, and there's tons on there. I'll, I'll link them down in the description down below. But they can look through all of them, and then they can tell you, I want C09 for my wedding. This is the text I want. And then you go on Projectorgram where you order it, you type in all the info, and you order it. Very simple, very easy, very hassle-free. One thing to note, you do need to order your digital monograms in advance, similar to how you did Gobos, but there are options for expedient shipping just like with Gobos as well. Uh, but just keep in mind, you don't want to wait until like the day before to go order your digital monogram. It doesn't work that way. Someone has to actually go in and design these, so order at least like two weeks in advance, preferably. One additional thing I love when they actually send you the monogram is they don't send you just one size file. They send you five size files. Uh, everything from an extra small, small, medium, large, large, and extra large. And those are based on the actual image itself. So the image is always the same, but the monogram will be smaller on the image and larger and larger and larger. Obviously, this is very handy if you've never been to the venue or you don't know where you're going to be shooting the monogram. Because if you're shooting from a far distance away, you might need to use the smaller, extra small, so that way the monogram isn't overly large when it actually hits the wall at the back of the room. Even though you have zoom capabilities, uh, the ability to have all five sizes allows you to, if you're really close up, you can use that extra large one and fill the wall. If you're really far back, you can use the small one. It, it's just very handy and something I really didn't uh, think about until they actually sent me one and I actually went out in the real world and was using them. I was like, this is very helpful. And lastly, guys, if you're looking for any resources, like some of the specs I talked about on projectors, projectorgram.com, this is what they do. Animated and digital monograms is what they do. Um, you can go on their site. You can order gravity stands. They have recommended projectors on there, so you can go look through. Um, it's actually where I decided to buy this projector. I went on their site, and this one was one of the recommended projectors, um, so I bought it. But they have a list of recommended projectors. They have all the info that basically you need to know about doing digital and animated monograms um, if my info is not enough for you. So highly go check out projectorgram.com even if you guys just need some info on how to do this. Alrighty guys, I think that's pretty much it. I hope I covered everything that you guys wanted to know about digital monograms, both animated and static. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them down in the comment section down below or hit me up, send me a DM on Instagram. I answer every single question and, and, and uh, respond to everything you guys send me on Instagram. That's like my main area of communicating with you guys. If you guys like this video, be sure to slap a big thumbs up on it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications. If you haven't already checked out the merch shop, djlife.com, I'm repping the hoodie right here. Super comfy, super soft. I haven't stopped wearing it since we got them in. Um, but variety of different shirts. Joe put up a little scrolling of the different designs we have on there. Some of them might be sold out. We might have some sizes sold out. It's very limited quantities and we don't restock it after they sell out. So we'll have brand new designs coming out uh, later in 2020 for the second official drop. These are very high quality t-shirts, high quality printing. These are designed to last. These are designed to be something that you can actually wear for years to come. But anyways, guys, that's all for this video. Uh, like always, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep them records spinning and I will see you guys next time. Peace.